Hey, I'm going to record some of these um, teachings that we've been doing this summer, uh, Backyard Proverbs. And the point, uh, the point was to continue Bible study this summer, but to do it in a little bit, a different relaxed way. And um, I come up with this harebrained idea because that's uh, what I do, um, to take a look at the Proverbs and then put them alongside um, the New Testament or what, what Jesus said. So we're taking Proverbs 13, um, and, and there was no reason for randomly choosing 13. I just had some, some really good options for things to talk about which most of the Proverbs do. And we're gonna look at it in uh, four ways. So four, four different things we're gonna analyze it with. Number one is we're gonna describe it and define it. So sometimes we read over things and we don't just sit back and go, wait a minute, what does the word mean? And how does it mean that to me? Because Ethel, I don't know an Ethel, who is sitting beside me may think the word go means something totally different than I think the word go means. Well, maybe that wasn't a good word to choose, but you got the point. And then we're going to look at um, three questions. Number one, what, what is it saying? What is it saying? And after we think about that and talk about that, then we're going to do the obvious. What is it not saying? And then we're going to see where Jesus fits in. So with every proverb, I am going to um, also present something from the New Testament, um, either words of Jesus or words of Paul or other random apostles who had brilliant things to say at the moment, and uh, we're going to talk about them. So the proverb, a proverb is a saying, and it's not necessarily always exactly going to happen. It's not a mathematical equation like one plus one is two, which would be nice because then we'd have some guarantees in life, but we all know that there are no guarantees in life. And you can do everything right, everything according to the Proverbs, and it blows up in your face. Well, maybe not in your face, maybe it falls apart on the ground. Um, and then you can do nothing right, seemingly, and it turns out okay. And so the writer of Proverbs is kind of giving you, well, the chances of things turning out well if you do, do these things are much higher. The probability is much higher. If you um, if you mow the lawn consistently on a, on a normal basis, it's not going to be knee high. Okay, well, that is true. But when you have a lot of rain and the, and the grass grows four inches a day, I might be a little bit um, far-fetched. Um, it, it might be that you can mow it every week and it's still tall, or you can mow it twice a year during a drought and it's not tall at all. So that's an idea of usually this is what happens, but it's not always. So um, Proverbs 13, we're just gonna jump into the first, the very first uh, verse. And a wise son hears his father's instructions, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. And I think most of what I'm going through is a message version. So let's just define that, a wise son. Well, wise, wise means applying knowledge. So knowledge is, is what you know, and wisdom is what you, how you apply what you know. A son, wouldn't necessarily mean a son. It means someone that, um, your offspring, someone you're teaching. Um, I wanted 12 kids. Yes, I know I was crazy. Um, I wanted all boys, which was even crazier. Um, and I had two boys and two girls and got to keep three on earth. But you know, we've had a lot of people live with us, a lot. In fact, our last one living with us was a 76 year old homeless lady. So, you know, would I call her a son? No. But all these other kids that live with us, they're my sons and daughters. They're, they're people that we're investing money in and time and energy and emotions and lots of chocolate chip cookies. So here's, here's when you listen. Now I know that you can watch the canopy behind me wave, but you can probably hear the wind. Um, I don't even know what time it is, but I can hear the Casson noon bell. It's a siren and it sounds very, very loud. Um, at about 6.45 in the morning, a mile and a half away, I can hear the train coming through the crossing. Hearing is, is it goes in your ear, but then you just process it. So you, you, you cognitively are aware that, ah, something I am hearing, I'm listening to it, it's processing. His father's, okay, now his is, is what we would call a um, show's possession of, but his father's instruction is, is kind of inferring to the son because back in the day and pretty much in our day, um, we as parents want to teach our children. So we're going to give them instruction. And most of us mothers will mother anything. And if it's our child or not, 
but it's our way of trying to parent, trying to teach, trying to love, trying to impart knowledge, trying to help people make better decisions. We parent, whether they're our kids or not. Um, I have tried very unsuccessfully parenting children when they're out of control that aren't mine. Of course, I successfully, you know, parented mine. They were perfect. Uh, but other people's kids, uh, I snap my fingers and they just look at me. They don't do anything. Um, you know, so, so we, we try to parent, we try to love, we try to teach. But it says here, a wise son, a son that knows how to apply what he's learned, he's thinking, he's hearing, he's applying in his mind. His, his father, his parents' um, instructions. Instructions are how to do things. Um, I know I'm in trouble, or maybe I know we're in trouble, when I go to the shop and Jim has the um, instruction manual out. Because, well, we're not in trouble. Um, but there's a point in time where you can't Google anymore. you got to get the directions out and just really read it. And that's kind of what it's saying here. There's, there's instructions to things. And you need to share that with other people when it's important. And if you're a wise son, you're going to listen to that so you don't get in trouble or you do it right. And then the other side of that is, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. So um, the definition of a scoffer is someone who, who makes fun and does not accept words given as either mere fact or a knowledge or wisdom of any sort, they're going to argue with you no matter what you say. And listen goes back to the hearing. Listen is, is not just in the ear and out the other, it's processing it and doing something. You can make a choice. You can listen and say, no, I'm not going to do it. You can listen and say, yes, I'm going to do it. But you've listened and you've been able to balance the difference and I'm going to make a choice here. And then rebuke. Now, it's interesting because the wise son hears his father's instruction, doesn't consider it rebuke. And I think a lot of times when my kids were growing up, I was kind of rebuking them by telling them, no, you can't do that. You got to do this. But a rebuke is when you have to correct something. And I am, I rebuke, well, that's not the way to say it. I have, I have done two different handlings of rebuke. I've done it well and I've done it poorly. So doing it poorly is just arguing. Oh, no, 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 no. That's, that's not how I think. Um, that's not the truth. I'm not going to do it. I don't want to. And the other way of handling it is, you know, I might have to study about that. I might have to think about that. I hear dogs. You're probably going to have dogs coming around here pretty good. So James 13. So anyway, let's go back to what does it say? Well, it says that someone who's wise, whether the son, a daughter, a friend, a total stranger, they're going to hear instruction, no matter what it is, the father, the son, the Holy Spirit. Uh, no matter who gives it, somebody wise is going to listen. Now a scoffer, someone who laughs, makes fun, is not going to accept whether it's rebuke, whether it's suggestions, whether it's, um, they're, not, they're just not going to. So what does it not say? Well, it doesn't say that the instructions are always going to be handled right and carried out well. And it doesn't always say that the rebuke is right on perfectly. Here comes the dogs. Um, and then in James 3.13, it says, Who among you is wise and, wise and understanding? Let him show him by his good behavior, his deeds in the gentleness of wisdom. So here we're talking about back to the wise and understanding. And that goes right back along to hearing father's instructions and listening and understanding and processing rebuke. So it also goes on in James say, let him show him by his good behavior, his deeds in the gentleness of wisdom. So good behavior, good behavior actually follows instruction. Cause when you learn something, you, when you're instructed to do something, you're going to have a behavior that follows that. And good would be a positive behavior. Deeds are what you do. It's your, it's your pattern of behavior is your deeds. Um, many people want to have good deeds, but they don't want to establish a pattern of behavior that would do good things. And then toward the end, it talks about the gentleness of wisdom. Now you think about, I think about gentle. I think about my grandma Campbell. She was a very gentle person. She was a very, very gentle soul. She was a very gentle spirit. And she was also a very wise woman. I've not heard a lot of people that are rude, crude, and arrogant be gentle. I just haven't heard it. Um, there's something goes along with gentleness and wisdom that rudeness and arrogance and rebuke and scoffers aren't gentle. They usually uh, really want to prove they're right in all costs. They're right. And when we have to be right, we often aren't gentle. 
So that's the first verse of uh, Proverbs 13. Um, Jesus fits in by taking the advice of the wise son, heeding the father's instructions, and showing the dichotomy of a scoffer doesn't listen. And he's saying in James, who is wise and understanding? It's going to show. So as a challenge today, um, let your good behavior and your deeds be gentle in showing that you're a wise person. You don't have to be arrogant. You don't have to tell everybody what you know and rub it in their face, especially if someone else is wrong. Being gentle and being kind and being humble and gently show people where they're wrong, not rebuke that brings out the scoffer in us because definitely if someone's gonna come at me and be rude and, and critical, I'm gonna probably get my, my hackles up a bit because it, it hurts and it's um, awkward. But if someone comes up in a spirit of gentle wisdom, a lot of times it's a lot easier to see where I have been wrong and it's just easier to listen to instruction. So uh, have a good one. That was Proverbs 13.1.